there's nothing more powerful than individual freedom, desire to grow and, and do better for yourself and your family. I'm joined this morning by the governor of Puerto Rico, Luis Fortunio. Welcome. Thank you, Matt. Most people don't realize that there is a governor in the United States of America who has cut spending by 20% in the last two years. So let's walk through how that happened, basically. Um, start with telling us what did you run on back in, in 2008 and what did your party run on? And then what did you discover once you checked under the hood of state? Certainly. Well, we, we knew we were going to be facing a, a serious fiscal situation, but it was three times as bad as we thought it would be. And I had said that we needed to shrink the size of government and that I wanted to uh, actually put back in the people's hands the money that they had earned uh, uh, working every day. Uh, and, uh, and that was my pledge. However, when I came into office, we didn't have money to meet our first payroll. We had to take out a loan. It was really bad. So our cuts are deeper than in any other part of the country because of the situation, dire situation that we face. Actually, the rating agencies were about to throw us into junk status, and we had to act buy time to avoid that from happening. In the first two years, however, we have been successful in, in slashing the size of government by 20%, and because of that, we have commenced lowering taxes across the board. Now, tell us about you had to go to New York to actually talk with the uh, ratings heads. What, how did that meeting go? Sure. Actually, uh, even before being sworn in, uh, I knew that they had been lowering our, our rating uh, year after year, and we were at the brink of, of becoming you know, or, or being thrown into junk status. So before being sworn in, in December 08, I flew up to New York, met with the rating agencies, acknowledged that we had a problem. I thought it was bad, it was much worse, but, uh, but at least told them that we had a plan and we bought six months. And we immediately started working on that plan and delivering on that plan. And that's why actually our rating has come up and people are realizing that this is the way to go. Sketch out the size of the problem. What was the budget deficit? What was the state of the economy when you took office? And how has that changed in two years? Of course, uh, our recession commenced two full years before it started in the rest of the country. So the economy really was at a standstill at best. Secondly, our uh, state budget deficit was uh, the largest proportionally speaking in the country. Actually, Even worse than California? Much worse Illinois. proportionally. Actually, 44% uh, percent of uh, actually revenues was deficit. So it was, it was really bad. And, uh, and it was impossible to handle any type of organization like that, much worse a government. So we didn't have a choice. It was not like, uh, you know, we, we wanted to do this this way or that way, or we, we knew it was going to be 20%. We just did what was right. Uh, and unemployment at the time was more or less? Closer to 17%. Wow. Uh, so uh, just imagine, you know, uh, we had been in the deepest recession since the 30s. Uh, the unemployment was, you know, double digits, approaching 20%. And, and no light at the end of the tunnel at all, and no money in the bank. Concretely, what were the first steps that you took to cut the size of government? Well, the first step was to cut my own salary by 10%. You have to you know, actually act that way if you're in public service, I feel. Uh, I slashed 5% the cabinet um, uh, secretary's uh, salaries as well. And then we turned to everything else. And we slashed by 15% uh, all government contracts. You know, if you wanted to contract with government, we we're going to slash 15% off right away. And that existing contracts you ripped up? We, well, we, we went back contracts? to them. You know, we said, you know what, we're either moving to another place or we slash 15% uh, because we always had escape clauses uh, and contracts do have escape clauses. So, so we told them, we, we, you know, we cannot continue paying you as if there is, you know, no tomorrow. Uh, we, uh, we eliminated credit cards from government uh, on official vehicles, cell phones. My cell phone, I pay for it. I, really? I, I travel with my own credit card and I get reimbursed. Uh, and that's the way to do it, I feel. And, and then we, turn, we had no choice but turn to a, a actually uh, overbloated uh, bureaucracy. And, and we, by voluntary and mandatory measures, we slash 17,000 
public employee uh, positions. Out of a total state sector of... Well, actually, uh, central government was about 140,000. Uh, so, uh, and about 12,000 were mandatory and the balance uh, were voluntary. We just had another window, voluntary window of early retirement, and we just added another 4,000 to that. And, uh, and again, uh, the idea is for uh, them to either retire altogether or we have provided them with incentives to uh, create their own, their own businesses. Uh, entrepreneurship should be part of, of our culture and, and provided them with also incentives to go back to school if they wanted to. Uh, so we, we, we really wanted them to uh, continue growing as a person. Now the sort of liberal progressive idea about economics that sort of obtains right now, the Paul Krugman-esque idea, is that if you cut the size of government in the teeth of a recession, you're just going to make a recession into a depression. So this is an interesting experiment. You've cut the size and the cost of government. What has happened to the economy of Puerto Rico? Well, from 17 percent unemployment is down to 14 and a half percent, and all economic indicators are, are moving in the right direction. Actually, uh, by slashing taxes, I'm convinced that it will move even quicker in the right direction. But the truth of the matter is that after being in, in a recession for five years, this trimester we're seeing positive numbers in essentially every, every single economic indicator. So it's the opposite. Now you cut government first and then taxes second. Taxes was just last month, if I'm not exactly. mistaken. Talk a little bit because it's interesting about the, uh, the numbers on the uh, tax cuts and then also the very unique to Puerto Rico uh, system of triggers in the future for tax. Of course. Uh, first of all, our, our Internal Revenue Code is a mirror image of the Federal uh, Internal Revenue Code. So in that sense, we had the 54 Code, which is pretty similar. So what we've done and in Puerto Rico... And just to interrupt, you don't pay federal taxes. We don't pay federal right. taxes on Puerto Rico's source income. Okay. If I, I make money in any of the 50 states, then I pay federal taxes on that. We do pay FICA and Medicare you know, and all that stuff, but we don't pay income tax. So, so what we did in Puerto Rico is doable at the national level. Uh, and what we did is we slashed individual and corporate taxes across the board. On the corporate side, we had a 39% top corporate rate plus a 2% sur uh, surtax that was imposed by uh, my predecessor. So it was actually an effective tax rate of 41%. We slashed that down to 30% this year and to 25% by 2014. On the individual side, uh, we slashed uh, taxes by 25% this year, and actually it's a sliding scale in the next five years that will, at the end of the day, save taxpayers an average of 49% in their taxes. What happens halfway through it, however, is that we must balance our budget by 2013, by the end of 2013. If we haven't balanced our budget, and uh, if we're not meeting our goals uh, on the fiscal side, then we will not move into the next phase in 2014, 15, and 16. So that makes the taxpayer the watchdog of our tax cuts and the watchdog of a responsible government. Now this uh, would suggest that you're basically bringing the taxpayers on board as part of this project. But how has the reaction been so far? I imagine that it hasn't been totally smooth. There must be people who squawk when you cut 17,000 government jobs and, uh, and have a different idea of economics than, uh, than sort of mainstream uh, well, there's, there are some that have a philosophy that actually uh, the government can handle our money much better than we can. I totally disagree. I believe that actually people are, are working hard, sometimes with two or three jobs, to earn that money. They should keep it. And, and they, they are no much better than any government how to handle it, starting with my own. So I, I went on TV. I've been preaching uh, uh, this message. There is some disbelief out there. I'll be honest with you. People don't believe that actually we're slashing taxes dramatically, as dramatically as we are, because this had never happened before. The last time, in Puerto Rico at least, that the government slashed taxes was almost 20 years ago. Ever since then, the government has been raising taxes and taking more and more of our own uh, money. So this, uh, we're moving in the right direction for the first time in a, a generation. And uh, so there's some dis disbelief. Actually, I went on the State of the State address with uh, the tax return, hmm. and show, showing the voters uh, which line they will use to get a credit this first year of the tax uh, reform, because I know a lot of people simply cannot believe this is happening. There was some pushback when we 
commence doing what we did. But then again, you, I get elected to do the right thing, not to be popular every single day. And I did the right thing. And I'm convinced that at the end of the day, uh, taxpayers will actually be doing much better than they were before because of what we've done. And this will be permanent. And that's exactly what I want to do. We were dead last uh, when I started my, my in office two years ago in terms of, of the size of our, of our budget deficit. We were the worst in the country. Today we're 20th. So there are 31 states that are worse off than we are. And how has the bond rating uh, rankings uh, changed? Weren't you 51st basically? In, uh... Exactly. And actually today we have the highest rating in 35 years. And for the first time since 1983, uh, the rating agencies have uh, provided us with a positive outlook. Uh, for our economy and our fiscal situation. And they're saying it, I'm not saying this, you know, it's, it's the third parties are saying this.